Well, hello, hello, and welcome to a very interesting episode here of A Course in Miracles. And thank you all for tuning in. I'm Tomas Garza. And well, we're going to talk today about the body. So we've arrived at a really interesting place here in part two of the workbook. As you know, we've done 260 lessons so far in the workbook, and there are a number, dozens actually, of other videos explaining further portions of A Course in Miracles, which is kind of funny, isn't it, to say, because, well, there aren't really portions of it. But since we're breaking it down that way as a learning device here in the world, let's talk about <laughs> a device for communication. So we've arrived at a point which is actually part five here. And it's part two of the workbook. Number five, what is the body? And this is the framework question for the next 10 lessons, which we'll get to in the next video. Let's talk a little bit about what it is, because you've heard me talk about the body as an illusion, as nothing, doesn't exist. Okay. Well, that may or may not hit home for you. That may or may not be tangible for you. You may or may not connect with that or even relate to it. And of course, I'm not the only person saying it. If I were, that would be kind of weird, wouldn't it? Because really what spirituality is all about is helping us get out of our own way so that we can go home, which is another way of saying allowing ourselves to be exactly as we are, truth, allowing truth to be exactly as it is. There's no place for us to go. So when we say go home, we're simply allowing the truth to be as it is. That's it. That's all. Simple, right? End of videos. <laughs> Not quite. Not quite, right? Not quite, because we go through in the world and we complicate things. And let's talk about this thing right here the body. Now, our science books will have us believe that we are a physical body. Really, I don't remember my biology books saying that we were encased in a physical body, prisoner to said thing, body, that had murderous intent, that only wanted to separate, lash out, and attack, and then prove its separation by dying. I don't recall that, but that's the message that we get. Everything in our society, doesn't really matter what part of the world you were raised in, any society tells us that we're a body. Spirituality tells us otherwise. So which is it? Right? Which is it? Which is it when this feels so real to us? someone called I feel this. this we call this a cheek and these are teeth and these are eyes and this is gray hair you know I mean we subdivide this thing into all kinds of different categories and subcategories and while scientifically biologically it, it's very intricate and quite beautiful in a lot of ways the question here in spiritual practice is, to what purpose do you ascribe it? That's worth repeating, isn't it? To what purpose do you ascribe the physical body? Are you using it for separation or are you using it for healing? That's another way of framing the question that we've repeated ad infinitum, and we're going to continue to repeat ad infinitum. Why? Because we need the ad infinitum, yeah? It's another variation on the, are you choosing love or fear? Are you choosing God or the ego? How do you choose to see a physical body? And 
an all important question from A Course in Miracles. What is it for? Everything that we see, we should be and could be asking ourselves, what is it for? What is it for? Is it for healing? Or is it for separation? Because we see in spirituality that we'll identify with what we think makes us feel safe. And that will be one with us. Our minds are that powerful. If we identify with the body, then we're a body. Yet, if we identify as spirit or Christ, something other than a body, we're that. So the power of our minds kick in. This is why A Course in Miracles and spirituality in general is so powerful. It's because we're that powerful. So while we see a body that acquires these things called gray hairs and aches and pains and disease and illness, all of that, it doesn't last. The question is, what purpose are we giving it? What is it for? This is an invitation to each and every one of us to use this communication mechanism for healing. In A Course in Miracles, we're encouraged to give it over along with our entire experience, body, speech, mind, all perception, everything, give it over to the Holy Spirit for the Holy Spirit's purposes, which are none other than healing and salvation. The body does as it's instructed. Think about it. Right? If you give it a healing purpose, what does it accomplish? Your purpose. What do you in turn see? Healing. You see the world forgiven, according to the language of A Course in Miracles. You see your brother as yourself. You see oneness, oneness, unity, joy, peace, love, and all of that. All of that. Yeah. So the body is, in fact, like all of this experience, a dream. Yet here in the dream, you get to choose in the present moment, what you use it for. What you use it for will become your experience. It's what you will see. Think about it. If we choose to see stress, struggle, warfare, hatred, and fear, that's what we see. And on the other hand, if we choose to see love, peace, togetherness, joy. That's what we'll experience. So we often, and all too often, go through life thinking that everything that we see and experience with the body's senses is dictating reality to us. It's presenting us with decisions to make, Right? It's actually the other way around. We're seeing what we've chosen. There's no getting around that, even though we'd like to deny that. And, and maybe you do, right? It's all right. We see what we've chosen to see. I mean, that's it. We've chosen things in the past. And for most of us, it's actually a mix of love and fear right now, because we don't see constant warfare and strife unless you're living in a zone of warfare and strife. 
then we see a mix of both, don't we? We are feeling great one moment, horrible the next. And the beautiful times don't last, right? the beautiful feelings don't last. They're sometimes replaced one minute to the next by feelings of guilt, anxiety, fear, sadness. It's a roller coaster ride, so to speak. Yeah, the world is a roller coaster ride, but we have this beautiful free will and we get to choose. We get to choose our own experience. So I invite you to ascribe to the body healing purposes, healing intent. What is it for? It's for healing the Son of God, which, by the way, is you. It's everybody, it's everybody, it's everyone, as we've seen. So I invite you to choose healing as the purpose of the physical body. In other words, choose salvation as the purpose of the physical body, forgiveness, miracles. When you choose that consistently, you'll consistently see a whole different world. Because that is the way it works. We're seeing what we've chosen to see. So let's all choose love. Let's all choose healing and joy and forgiveness. It would be really lovely, wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great if everybody did this? Well, not today. So you've got to start with yourself. So change your mind about what everything is for, not just the body, by the way, but all of phenomena, everything. Change your mind about what the world is for. It's for healing the Son of God. Sit with that idea. I invite you to sit with that today. And then, of course, <laughs> I invite you to sit with that tomorrow and the next day and the next day and on and on and on. Because the message of spirituality continues to repeat itself. Thank God, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's an important lesson because we do definitely, definitely always have a choice. So I invite you to choose love and choose healing. And as we go forward in the next few lessons here in the workbook, I invite you to ascribe to the body the purpose of healing. What is it for? It's for healing the Son of God. Let that idea really, really permeate your being and sink in. And sooner or later, you'll come to realize that you're having a vastly different experience. You'll enjoy it, I promise. All right, talk to you soon. <laughs>